things hollowed out. And in the vast reaches of this space were white parasols. And I don't want to say that they're mushrooms because I didn't get the sense that they were mushrooms. The floor back there was a flashing white light. In the final silence. I got a flowy feeling within me, or my body felt flowy. And there was a darkness into the room. And the, it was like three laps. There was like a white tie, a slightly glowing white tie, and it turned into a rabbit. And then the pulses. like a little explosion. All pain, all stiffness, gone. But mostly, I felt warm and content. One of the tricks of the Judeo-Christian missionary, or preacher, is to say, well, these themes these meanings, they're not in the same order in this story. Are they not exactly the same in this story? I keep forgetting where that Bible verse is about, oh, these cleverly imagined stories full of meaning. They're really true this time incarnate. And, you know, um, I'm not entirely sure where that verse is, but it makes that same point. A person could say that the Uri Aduni is rather than a reference to say Adonai instead are to use the same vowels when we're saying Yahweh. We might say that it's referring to the you know deity of herbs and other plants saying that it's the same entity saying that we have um, sort of a Martian and in other respects a Saturnian entity the Old Testament and the New Testament seem to do a bit of the making the various things that people treat as deities into one. They talk about those, you know, there's a lot of supplanting of cults, as it would happen. Um, some details are left out. Of course, when you're talking about the Hebrew section of the Bible, we're talking about, well, but they don't worship them, so... Some things were incorporated, and instead of doing like the Catholics did and make saints that you prayed to, but they were subordinate lesser gods, really. That's what they mean when they say saint. Um, they said, 
No, they incorporated Samson and some others and said this is, you know, we can look at some of this and say that, well, we can go beyond the patriarchal and the matrilineal society ideas, um, but the matrilineal societies would probably protect the women's rights more, you could say, because the family would stay around in the same area, and she, you know, so the guys would go off, and they'd, they'd you know, they'd try to win themselves women and all that, all that st or bride prices and dowries and all, and uh, however it was done, you know, um, so they would come and go. So, you know, if the woman wanted to end the marriage and all that other stuff, being surrounded by the tribe, uh, the people that, you know, the family she married into, you know, that could be more difficult. But Islam did that more smoothly by talking about the rights of both and all that. Um, it did the thing of going the same areas. You know, people talk about astrology and, you know, plant mysticism and various other things um, regarding the earth and the sky and and all that without saying that deity was gendered, that deity was um, split into different entities. No god had no um, other way of polytheism, you know, was very cohesively expressed in that way. Now, some of the stories that didn't make it into the Bible and were never considered for the Bible because they were written in, okay, let's turn this into just a fable. Let's act like it's a, but it's really a myth. You know, you have some details of the story changed. And it, you know what I mean? Like they'll have, instead of the name of this entity and this and all this other stuff, you'll have, um, just, just a typical character in a town, and oh, this. So this represents, you know, some male or female deity and the opposite gender entity that they interact with, and this becomes obvious if you know more about some of these myths. Another thing that is interesting, like the Lunasa myth, you could say, and. Is, is, you know, sort of, sort of the, one of the ideas, you know, the human sacrifice or whatever, they have this guy who they don't know who his father is because either the mother was ritually gangbanged or whatever the case was, was, so he has to be the one sacrificed. But it was somehow uh, ritually okay, or it was made ritually okay because he was the one who dies, but... You know, they die not necessarily that they grab somebody and, you know, take them off, but, you know, it's, you know, that sort of story, too. And you have some of the same thing, uh, so, uh, you know, some of the same sacred, the, you know, remember how last time I was talking about the blackthorn and the, and the apple not being included but then again, they are, it's, it's implied, so the secret hidden things, you know, the Bible has some of that same stuff. You have a partridge cult, and you have a bull cult, and you have how certain stories, a certain story in the Bible indicates that there was a merging of this, and I don't know, a dried bull penis in a, in a drum, but, you know, whatever, it was, it was, you know, part of the things. And one of the things that is definitely true that even somebody who uh, doesn't look too much into meaning, whether you're talking about other meanings for the same words or uh, hermetic sort of meaning to the mythology, you find out that the Israelites were very much attracted to the various other cults. And that's why as soon as you had what could be called Judaism about 540 BCE, 
much less, you know, the probable period of what they called Judaism. You know, the second book of Maccabees is the first historical mention of Judaism in, uh, you know, about 200 BCE is probably when that type of faith was, you know, what could be called rabbinic Judaism in a way. Um, how that first appeared, right? But I don't think a person can ever say that there was ever one type of Judaism. Some of what starts with the prophets, you could say that. And Judaism and Christianity did something a little bit different than other groups did, is they came in and said, we are superior, and that gives us a right to conquer. And, you know, they wrote that into the books. Islam has none of that. Um, but, and it also doesn't go as far as, as some of these myths that, you know, okay, the lame king, uh, or lamed king that has to, that, you know, that is given his title by a woman. Um, but a lot of these conflicts, you know, were to prove themselves and to ritually depose and, and, you know, back and forth, that sort of stuff. So it wasn't in the same context of intolerance and, you know, superior races and all that. Sometimes you found that that was stirred up, but, you know, it's few and far between in what people call pagan or heathen or whatever.